I don't know no one who don't like drones. And when it comes to flying drones, there are like a couple of tips and tricks that I think are absolutely essential to making sure that your drone shots just look a bit sick. Some of these things are in camera, some of them are in controller, and the others are in the edit. So I'm going to go over them right now. But first things first, let's take a couple of little looks at some drone shots, and then we can get stuck in, mate. Oh. <laughs> I hope you're all sweet. So today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks. I'll be talking about them later. But for now, the number one little tip trick rule that I like to go to when it comes to flying drones is get nice and close to a subject. Now, I don't really care if it's a subject in the frame or if it's a tree, could be a mountain, could be your foreground, could be the ground. Just get nice and close to something and your shot is gonna look so much more dynamic. It's not just like a still frame slowly moving in the air. Once you get nice and close to something, even clouds, right? Going through some clouds, you've got something in the foreground and it gives you this like woof, 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 woof. just a bit sick. Get close to your subject, get close to something in the frame and it just looks so much more dynamic because obviously something's rushing past the frame, either left, right, bottom, you're giving someone a haircut. Don't give people haircuts, that's like, go to the barbers if you need a haircut, right? Don't get your drone pilot to, it don't work, I've tried it. Definitely be a bit careful with this one. I nearly took my fingers off with a drone, it wasn't fun. Be careful, these things are sharp as fuck. So just look after your fingers and your mate's hairs and that basically. Number two, now for me, this is a rule that literally should be across every aspect of filmmaking. And that is your shutter speed. You absolutely wanna keep a 180 degree rule when it comes to your shutter speed. Now, most of the times I'm shooting at 24 frames a second, so my shutter speed's gonna be about 148 for the second. That just gives you so much nice, smooth, dynamic motion blur, because trust me, whenever I see a drone shot, or any shot really, that has fast, choppy action in it, unless it's like an action scene, right? Like a boxer or something like that, it just genuinely hurts my nervous system. There's just something about it that it just doesn't look natural and it kind of jars me like really hard. And especially when it comes to drone shots because they're so fast, they're so dynamic, there's so much motion in them, especially when you get nice and close to your subject. Like I said in number one, the rule, it ain't a rule. Like I said in tip number one, if you can get nice and close to your subject, you've got a nice slow shutter speed, so when you absolutely zip past that subject, it blurs out a frame, you can stick a nice little bit of, you know, sand design on that, and boom. You've got such a nice looking shot, looks really natural, looks so cinematic, really high end, really professional, because when there's them stutters and them jitters, mate, it genuinely just gives me a headache. Some people might want to use it for, you know, like a creative reason, but personally, I can't stand it. Now, depending on what drone you've got, I've got the Mavic 2 Pro. This has a variable aperture in there. I think I can go from like 2.8 all the way up to F11, so I've got a nice amount of exposure that I can change my shot at. But if you don't, absolutely make sure you got yourself some ND filters. I personally use the Polar Pro ones. I've had them for years now, so they work pretty sick. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna go and look at them. Don't mess about with high shutter speeds. Keep them nice, slow, you know, cinematic and realistic. Bosh. Next up is camera movement. Now, obviously we can do the very, very obvious and simple shots, which are just like a track forward. We can obviously do like an orbit. But for me, them shots look so much better when you whack in there a cheeky little tilt of that gimbal. Now, it's really important that you practice, you get to know your controller, and you make sure that you've got your settings dialed in to the point where it is so smooth and you actually kind of transition out from tilting upwards to slowly leveling off instead of it kind of coming up like whacking the top, boom, nice and hard. That looks terrible. It kind of takes me personally out of the video that I'm watching. When that transition from a nice tilt is really slow, we come up and we just keep going. That is just like butter, mate, and it just, oh, I love that shit.
that. Them kind of three axis movements are so important to giving you a really nice dynamic movement. You're not just moving on one axis, you're moving this axis, you're also tilting up at the same time, and you might also be moving forward and panning at the same time, kind of orbiting around whilst doing that gimbal movement. When you can combine all of them three, I just think it looks double bloody naughty. So number four is actually having the right settings on your controller. At the end of the day, the most important thing, no matter what your settings are, is getting that practice on your controller. The more you're flying, the more you're using that controller, just like playing a computer game, the more you are gonna get used to them controls, the more you're gonna get used to that nice gimbal pitch, and once you've got it dialed in, you are ready to go, and you're pretty much gonna get it bang on almost every single time. When you are out there in the field, when you're flying, and when the light's going down, you've got all these pressures on you, you are gonna pull it out of the bag because it's second nature. You've just got control of that controller and you know what you're doing. You're not even thinking about it, you're just flying, you know? You're watching that screen, your fingers are doing the work, boom, the drone is getting the shot. So for me personally, my gimbal pitch speed is at nine and my gimbal pitch smoothness is at 19. You do whatever settings you want, but I've got so used to them particular speeds on my gimbal that it just works perfectly for me and all Almost every single time I can pitch up, pitch down, and slowly transition out to a stable shot. Now, that might take a little while for you. It did take me quite a while to really get used to them settings, but once you've got them down, mate, you're laughing. But old horses, what if you ain't got a drone? Like, what are you gonna do if you ain't got a, a flying camera? You can go out and buy a flying camera, which works, you know, you've then got one. But if you can't do that, there is this company, it's called Storyblocks. I don't know if you've heard of it, mate, but basically Storyblocks is a huge library of online video and online stock assets. And it just so happens that Storyblocks have got an absolute ton of drone shots. They've got rural landscapes, they've got nature, we've got trees, sea, mountains, animals, people, everything you could possibly want. They've pretty much damn got it shot on a drone. They've got over a million different assets that you can download and use completely royalty free, whether you're a solo shooter, you're a commercial shooter, you're a big media house, there's a subscription for every kind of creator. They've got a ton of diverse and different kinds of content for any kind of needs. And they've not just got video assets, they've got After Reflects templates, Premiere Pro templates, titles, loads of different stuff that you can take advantage of with one of their really affordable subscriptions. I'm gonna leave a link in the first line of my description so that you can go and check out Storyblocks. Anyway, onto the editing of our drone shots. Now, when it comes to drone shots, if you've literally got like the world's most boring, static drone shot, static push-in, there are a couple of little things that we can do in the edit to make our shot a little bit more dynamic, take our shot from looking a little bit dead, a little bit boring, to just giving it that little bit of essence. Now these little tips are really, really easy. You can do something really, really simple, like a slow scale up. All we're gonna do in our edit is we're gonna go over to the scale and we're gonna increase or decrease our scale. That's gonna allow us to kind of push in on the shot as we're doing our movement. Say for example, you've got a subject in the frame and you really wanna kind of push in and add that focus onto them. That really works with a scale up. And you can also add like a ramp to that scale up or scale down. So you can kind of like ramp in to the next shots, which works really, really nicely. And something that I personally like to do is add in like an artificial tilt up, where it slowly tilts up and rests at the top of the frame. I love that kind of shot. If you haven't done it manually in camera or on the gimbal with your little joystick at the end of your controller, you can actually do it in the edit. Now you are gonna lose a little bit of your resolution because we have to punch in by about eight to 10%, depending on how big your tilt up that you want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna punch in on the frame. Let's go with 108 scale. Let's drag the frame all the way to the bottom of our sequence frame. And as the shot comes in, we slowly raise our frame to the point where it comes to the top of the frame. Now I know what you're thinking, it kind of just like comes up and is a really hard, abrupt stop at the top. However, if we go over to our keyframe, we can actually ramp it up. So it goes up nice and quick and it slowly, slowly, slowly rests 
at the top of that frame. You can obviously do it the other way around as well if you want to tilt down. That works really, really nicely. It definitely works a lot better when you're nice and close to a subject. So for example, you're like brushing across the floor, you can slowly raise your frame, but it just works really nicely in taking a standard push-in shot, a standard pull-out shot, and adding a little bit of professionalism, adding a little bit of a gimbal movement in there that's actually fake. Sometimes I look back at my shot in the edit and it just looks a bit dead, super flat. Just whack on one of them little tilt-ups in the edit and boom. It just gives it a little bit of essence. And that's what we're looking for in it, in life. And in our videos, a little bit of essence. So I hope you've enjoyed the little bit of essence I've given you here, because I'm kind of trying to give out all of this essence, you know, these herbal essences, mate. Fuck me, where have I gone with this? Anyway, people, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've really enjoyed that little cheeky, you know, little couple of tips and that. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be catching you lot in the next one, mate.